Hello world. I'm a big fan of MMORPGs or massive multiplayer online role playing games. And many of these games have uh, player driven economies inside. So the players get to control the direction of the game and the economy. But just like in real life, there's always a dark side to it. And for video games, there's um, bots or um, companies that employ automated bots that just does mundane routine things to get the online currency and then they sell that currency. But video game bots and video game automation doesn't always have to be a bad thing. So you can use them in video games that don't have uh, other players in it. And so the most common one that I've seen is in Minecraft. And so I'm gonna use Minecraft to show off a Python library called Pi Auto GUI and how you can make your own video bot, video game bot. So let's check it out now. But first, welcome to the 184th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Please consider subscribing to my channel and like this video and leave a comment uh, and tell me which video game that you're currently playing. So now let's check it out and I'm going to turn off my uh, camera right here and so my uh, so my computer doesn't blow up while I'm recording this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import Pi Auto GUI. This is not a standard library, so um, you can either pip install Pi Auto GUI or you can go into settings. Then you can go into your project, your interpreter. Click the plus sign when it opens. Find Pi Auto GUI and then go ahead and install this package. Then we're going to import sys for system and import time as well. So most video games, depending on what you're going to do, requires you to click on something to start. And so I'm not going to go into that. I don't think that's functional really. But um, let's say you want to fully automate everything. Well, the best thing to do is find the cursor, your position of your cursor. And you can use that with Pi Auto GUI. So let me just run this program real quick. All right. And so I'm just going to leave my mouse still. And you can see that the X and Y coordinate are 921 and 428. And let's say I wanted to automate pressing stop. So you can see 1796 to Y54. Um, so just, just, just pretend like we wanted to click here. So I'm going to leave it for a couple seconds. And then click here. And we wanted to capture those coordinates. So going back to this and you can see that the coordinates were up here. And that's how you can kind of begin your automation. So we printed the press C to quit, but I just quit up here. Then we're going to do a try. So while true, we're going to sleep for two seconds, right? Give you enough time to get your cursor in the position. And then the X and Y is going to equal pi auto GUI dot position. Then we're going to call it. And then the position in a string format equals X which you can see printed here, plus the string of X, right justified for Y, the string is Y, right justified for. And so that's uh, these numbers right here. And then we're going to print this position string plus a, um, a what's it called, a character space. And then we're going to end it with uh, a space here. All right, so that's how you get the positions of record not. And then if you get a keyboard interrupt, we're just going to print a blank, a blank spot right here. So, um, so that's it. So I'm not going to show how to use that in there, but what you can do with those coordinates is you can take it to the documentation and you can actually move your mouse to those locations. So. We're in the Pi Auto GUI documentation. You can go to mouse control functions. 
and then it tells you the X and Y increase. And so this is the code we just went over. Um, I changed it just a little bit to find the position of your mouse cursor. And then once you have that, you can go to, um, to see if the X and Y coordinates are even on the screen here. And then you can move your mouse. So move to here and here. All right. Or you can drag to, right, if you're trying to drag like this. And that allows you to kind of, um, we'll go into mouse clicks in a second, but that's how you can kind of navigate if you wanted to automate playing the entire game. Like if I wanted to automate here, I move to here, the coordinates, then probably sleep for one second, move to here, then do a mouse click for play selected world. So that I just wanted to show that real quick. So, um, but you always need the X and Y coordinates for that. But now what we're going to do is first we're going to try writing something. Okay, so let's try this. We're going to sleep for three seconds. Then that way I can have time to navigate to Minecraft. Then we're going to write this backslash. Wait one second as it pulls up this little command menu. We're going to pyautogui.write seed and then pyautogui.press enter. Right, this is the enter key. It's not going to type that. It's going to press the enter key. So let's check this out. I'm going to press main. Navigate to Minecraft. And there you go. It automatically typed in the seed. So uh, you could do that whatever you want. Whatever you're trying to automate um, by typing it in. Because a lot of MMORPGs require you to type something in. So that's how you write something. All right, so now we're going to actually click some buttons. So let's just say, and this is kind of what I've seen the most, is having to do something routine over and over again. So what we're going to do is sleep for three seconds again so I can navigate over. Then we're going to do pyautogui.click. Clicks equals one, so we're going to do one click, and this is the left click, and then the interval is every one second. So let's run this now. There you go, my finger is off the button, and it is just going to click the left button every one second, and you can see how this is useful especially for a um, especially for very monotonous tasks like uh, in, in Minecraft it's killing zombies but um, this could be clicking anything all right so let me come back here let's exit out so that's one way so we can click things um, another way is that we can walk Right, a lot of games require you to walk. All right, so I'm going to run this. Navigate over to Minecraft. Take my hand off. And there we go. Now we're walking. Right, it's a bot and we're walking. Okay, so let me... Oops. Forgot to uh, close out of it. But it works on anything, right? It doesn't have to be for the video game. Um, that could be in your pie charm. So we can also do something similar. So let me turn around in this little uh, road I made. All right, we can actually do with this key hold, held down. We're also going to pyautogui.click. Clicks equals one, interval equals one. So we can check out how that works too by starting this, navigating to Minecraft. And now we're moving forward and clicking the left button over and over again. All right, so that's just a quick introduction. Um, I'm not a fan of showing you how I would create a bot for an MMORPG if that's what you're interested in. Um, however, you can read the documentation and let me just go through the documentation real quick. So 
We already went over how to get your screen and mouse position. The mouse movement, if you wanted to move the mouse, you can use this pi auto GUI dot move to and type in the X and Y coordinates or the amount of pixels, right? Um, you can drag like we talked about. Um, we can do it slow or fast. So you can click the mouse here. You can click it um, once it reaches an X and Y coordinate. You can double click, triple click. Um, if you want to do the right button, you do button equals right. So or and then you could do just a double click here. You can also use the scroll wheel right here by using pi auto GUI dot scroll and this is the number of clicks. You can do mouse drags if you want. Um, we already went through that. So keyboard control, right? You can write, you can press enter, you can do keys down, keys up. This is what I showed you by holding down a button, you can press other buttons. Here's all the keyboard keys that you can pass into this. So you can pass these uh, keyboard keys here into dot hold and dot key down. We went over, oh, we can um, pop up message boxes. Don't really know how that would be important for video game bots. And you can always screenshot things as well. And so the reason why this screenshot is so cool is because you can screenshot it and then you can take a picture of something and you can calculate where the uh, coordinates are of what you want. So it uses image recognition on this. So you can locate this screen on your um, thing. So let's say we wanted this statistics button. Uh, I think it's easier just to find the middle of the button and find your cursor, but you could take a picture of this right here and then you can locate it on the screen. So I think that's pretty cool too, but I much prefer this X and Y coordinate a lot more. So like I said, this was just a quick introduction. Um, again, I'm not a fan of bots in video games such as MMORPGs, so that's why we didn't go over it. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please like the video if you did and leave a comment if you're working on a video game bot. All right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye world.